Hello and welcome to Confab, a journey through the world of language construction by somebody entirely unqualified to talk about the subject. Okay, so most conlang video series and uh, instruction resources will begin with the phonology uh, before moving on to grammar and syntax and all of that good stuff. However, I will be starting with the grammar for this series. The phonology isn't just like at a point where I feel comfortable sharing it yet, and I'm definitely going to like need to make a video to process what I want out of the phonology, but I want to put some more reflection into it and a little more work into it first before presenting it. Second, the grammar is what really drew me into this project because um, it's rife with opportunities to incorporate the thematic elements that I, the thematic and symbolic elements that I wanted to prioritize going forward. And third, although the uh, phonology is a great place for beginners to start, and it's where I started with my last project, um, it's not for everybody, and a lot of people when they're going through the language construction process, they'll have an idea for a language based on like a really cool thing they could do with the case system, or a really interesting numerical system. Um, like the grammar is what inspires the project in the first place, and so it's what they start with. So my video today is going to be about noun classes, also known as gender systems. Uh, special thanks to John Moore, a professor of linguistics at UCSD, uh, for uh, talking over, let me, let, let me, letting me talk to him about uh, my noun class system and for validating me and my efforts by nodding his head thoughtfully and saying, interesting. There have already been several excellent videos explaining this concept to beginners. As always, I recommend David J. Peterson's channel. I'm also going to look for other um, resources that explain noun classes because um, I feel like different people respond to different ways of explaining things. I won't be explaining what noun classes are in this video. I'm just going to be explaining what my noun classes are and why I chose to have the noun classes that I have. I just don't really feel comfortable um, making like an educational video right now. Um, for you guys explaining these linguistic concepts when there are so many people who have more, more experience than I do who can explain them so much better um, and more accurately than I can. I just don't have a very strong linguistics background or really any actual linguistics background um, and I want to make, if I ever like explain something I want to make sure that I'm doing it accurately. If you want me to make a noun class video explaining the concept, I'd be happy to do so, so you can feel free to request it or request any other linguistic subject that you're confused on. I would probably just make that like a separate series, like a linguistics 101 series, and I wouldn't be releasing those videos as often because I would want to make sure that for each video I'm doing as much research as I can and I'm putting out a product that's quality. My language isn't a naturalistic language, it's a personal language, and one of the values I describe and one of the values I described going into uh, going into this project is making each decision with a sense of the symbolism or spiritual purpose of it. So I'm putting a lot of thought into how I divide nouns into the different noun classes. Now, in a natural or naturalistic language, the division of nouns into noun classes can often be very arbitrary um, because of the way that language evolves over time, nouns will change classes. So like the original uh, noun class development might shift, like like the goal, like the, hmm. like oftentimes the phonetics of a, of a sound or of a word will um, be prioritized over the actual meaning of the word. So that words that don't, belong in a particular class, maybe placed in a particular class, based on it sounding similar to the other words in that class. However, however, um, as a personal language, uh, I don't have to have that naturalistic element. I can have these very clear divisions between the noun classes. And even though I do want to evolve my language through different sound changes um, and just evolve several generations of it, I have the reins in that, and I can make sure to manipulate my sound changes so that the nouns stay in the classes that they are supposed to stay in, or if I evolve a sound change and the noun um, would switch class, or it seems like the noun should switch a class, I could just pick a different word for that noun. I could just be like, yeah, oh, this original word, uh, it's not going to do it anymore, so I'm going to pick a, pick a word that's... Um, can still function effectively in the class that I want that noun to be in. And I don't need to have any sort of justification for doing that. I can just 
do it because it's a personal language, which is, um, feels very freeing, and I'm like, why didn't I just make a personal language to begin with when I started conlanging? Why did I have to, like, feel pressured to, like, make sure my sound changes are realistic and everything like that? So, without further ado, here are the three noun classes that I have for this language. The first noun class is the animate class, which is used for all living things, um, regardless of how active that thing is in our perception of it. So, um, a sloth is part of this class, and a snail and a slug. Um, so are um, microbes, as are human beings, and animals, and uh, rats. Rat? Rat, where are you? Abigail, Madeline, hey. Hey. The anime class is also used for systems and groups of people. So this could be um, ecosystems. It can also be communities and governments and countries and school boards and school systems. I was inspired to use the animate class to describe groups of living things after reading an NPR article entitled Life is the Network, Not the Self, which I will link to in the description of this video if you want to read it. It was a very interesting article about how all living things, all, or at least all complex living things, are formed by the interactions between individual living things. Like even human beings, our bodies are composed of countless microbes and bacteria and other living things, we would not be able to survive without those interactions inside of us. So when we think of the self as a entity, um, we're actually thinking of a very complex interaction, uh, a very complex internal ecosystem uh, between countless other life forms. And so that's something that I wanted to incorporate into my linguistic structure. Next I have the inanimate class which is used for non-living things. So uh, rocks, tools, um, as well as uh, buildings, empty spaces potentially, um, like a hole, and things like that. And finally I have a divine or abstract class which is used for all sorts of things. It's used for deities and spirits, forces of nature, so um, tsunamis and storms and earthquakes. It's used for astronomical bodies, so the sun or moon or comets, and it's used for abstract concepts like sexuality or emotions like fear or happiness. Sometimes the line between the classes is blurry. For instance, think of the concept of water. Water is part of the um, inanimate class if it's like a glass of water or a puddle. However, it's part of the divine class if you're talking about something like the ocean. The distinction is that inanimate nouns are always passive, um, when compared to humans. They're things that humans can control, um, humans and living things. Um, they're things that we exert influence on, whereas um, animate, and, animate and divine nouns are things that can exert influence on us. You can dive into a lake, you can swim across it, but whenever you're in a lake, the lake is exerting as much influence on you actually more influence on you than you are exerting on it. Even if you do a really fucking awesome cannonball, you're still like submerged entirely in a lake. Now in part because I don't have any definite phonology yet, I haven't worked out the basis of any agreement system. I do know that I want to incorporate suffixes into the marking system of the nouns to determine what class it's in, and I want to have like root words that can be modified with the addition of a um, class suffix um, that will place it in different classes to refer to different concepts. So for instance, if we go back to our example of water, um, let's say, again, like I don't have a phonology yet, so this is subject to change, this is just an example, um, but let's take um, the word water and let's say that it's, the word for it's mema. Now let's think that we have um, three suffixes, an animate suffix, tso, an inanimate suffix, le, and a divine suffix, nda. So if you want to refer to a um, water creature, an organism that lives in water, you would use the word mematsu. If you want to refer to a glass of water, or some other very small amount of water that you can control, you would call it memale. And if you want to refer to a large body of water, such as an ocean, or possibly a water spirit or deity, you would call it memanda. 
In addition to this noun class system, I'm thinking about having another system um, by which adjectives can be turned into nouns. For instance, take the word red. From red, we can derive redness, a noun describing uh, the quality of being red. Now, in my language, I could have redness be part of the abstract class, since it is something that's a bit conceptual. But I could also have a system by which it's sort of treated differently, where it's a different type of noun. Okay, so that's like a rundown of my noun classes. I will go way, way, way more into depth with the noun classes in future videos as I explore other grammatical elements and talk about how those grammatical elements impact the noun classes and vice versa. I highly, highly, highly encourage you to comment on this video with a description of your language's noun classes. Even if you don't think that you're doing anything special with them, just comment with what the noun classes are, how they work, how you decide which nouns go into which noun classes, and if they've changed over time and um, a little summary of like your process for making those decisions so that uh, other conlangers, especially beginner conlangers, can check out those comments and sort of see different processes or different decision-making methods for um, developing noun classes. Also, if you know of any other conlang or natural language that does something interesting with noun classes that's worth checking out, um, you can also comment those too. Mm. And after you've done that, um, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Um, and then also maybe like share this video um, on uh, your guys' social networks. I don't really know how to promote vlogs, but yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you can email me with any questions at aidenvoid at gmail.com. Um, I've also um, just made a Tumblr account for this channel. Uh, it's confabconlang.tumblr.com. Um, I use Tumblr probably most out of uh, most other social media sites, uh, so feel free to follow me there. I'll be more active on that probably. Um, also, if you have a Tumblr account that uh, is dedicated to your conlanging journey, uh, feel free to send me a message or tag me in a post um, so that I can go check out your blog and follow you. Um, also, I'm on Twitter. I don't use Twitter that often, but you can uh, follow me at Aiden Wood. I'm also on Discord, although I haven't figured out how to get Discord notifications on my phone, so I don't check it that reliably. But if you want to message me on Discord, it's at Aiden Wood there as well. Um, and I'm also on Reddit, uh, Stargazer AAW. So you can check me out there. I also haven't figured out how to get Reddit notifications on my phone, but I try to check the conlang subreddit um, and check my Reddit notifications at least once a day. So yeah, so feel free to follow me on all of those sites and um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have the best of luck in your conlanging journey.